Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to my studio. I'm glad you could join me this afternoon. We have a fun little project today, uh, learning a little bit about shadows, light shadows, a little bit about complementary colors, uh, a little bit about painting glass and water in glass and how refraction occurs and all sorts of fun stuff. So nice project. And let's go over to the table and see what we can do to paint this today. All right, here we go. We've got a little um, image of daisies, right, in a vase. This is the little vase that I photographed. And you can use artificial flowers as well as real flowers for painting. That works very well. They don't tend to die on you quite as quickly, so they're useful. They stick around for a little bit longer. Um, what we're going to learn today particularly is putting a darker background. It doesn't have to be quite as dark as the one I've done here. Uh, behind the flowers, I'm going to paint this one just a wee bit lighter so you can see a little difference. We're going to learn how to um, add that in right away so that we pop the flowers out. Then we're going to learn what happens when we paint glass. And there's a lot of things to know about painting glass. Okay, so I'll talk about colors for glass. I'll talk about how to... Um, make glass look dimensional. The drawing for glass is important. You don't need too much detail, but you need detail in the right places. So let's move across and um, let's just look at our tools that we'll be using first of all. A 10 brush, an 8 brush, and a 6 brush. Pretty standard for this size of painting. If I go to a larger painting, I usually move up the brush size. So for um, most things on a 5 by 7 painting, I'm using a number 8 brush. And for larger areas on a 5 by 7 painting, I'm using a number 10 brush. And the flat brush is always useful for correcting or for changing things or for adding a little detail, lifting, all sorts of reasons for having that one handy. Okay, also need your eraser handy today because this is a very delicate little flower and we're going to be taking out some of the pencil line before we start to paint it so that we don't end up with too many hard lines around the image when we've finished. We want to look also at what happens when uh, stems from flowers come into a layer of water and come out the other side. Very important that we keep that white edge so we can see where the water layer is. And if you look at my painting here, you can see there's a little refraction here. This stem does not continue directly down. It takes a little jog to one side, depending on which where the light is. And you can see that in the photograph that you have of the image to see which direction it goes. But it takes a little jog. It doesn't go all the way straight through. OK, so that's important to know, too. And that tells us a little bit about the idea that there's water here and there's no water there. We also have to bring our background through here, but we have water at the back layer of water at the back so it's not quite as dark in this water area as it is in the rest of the area as it comes through the glass it's a little bit lighter so lots of things to think about today so we're working five by seven for these watercolor skill level uh, skill um, webinars so each time you paint with me you're learning different skills in watercolor that you can apply to this subject and you can apply to a lot of other subjects too and it's a good idea to build those skills up, have them in your pocket so that when you are faced with something that you need to paint, you know exactly what to do and how to use, how to work with that. Sometimes we have to use a little bit of our own um, sensibilities. We can't actually copy exactly what's there. Sometimes we can. It just depends on the subject. And sometimes we don't want to. And that's a good thing, too. So this is our source material. It's my little photograph of that subject. And I did paint the background on my subject just a little darker. Today I'm going to go just a little bit lighter and warmer in there. So you can see the difference and you can see which one you like best. Okay, the drawing now. The drawing has to be detailed enough. But I made it a little darker so you could see it more clearly. But what I'm going to do before I start is to erase out a little bit of that drawing. Because if the lines are too heavy, particularly within the flower, on the outside, it's not a problem because we're going to go around the background with a color. But within the flower, you don't want to have too many of those darker lines. So I'm just going to pull them out just a little bit so that when we paint those, we sh should still be able to see them, but they should be lighter. And another way to make your drawing lighter is to use an H 
pencil, an H lead in your pencil, an H or an F. A harder pencil like that will give you a lighter line that is not quite as strong and invasive as a 2B, which is what I used here and what we normally use for drawing. So I'm just going to pull out a little bit in the center of this one too. And it won't be enough to lose the shape, but it'll be enough so that when we put the shadows in, this line is not going to dominate. And that should do it. We don't have to worry down here. We don't have to worry down there because that's going to be a darker tone behind this area. And so we're good to go on that. Okay, so make sure you just erase out a little bit so you've lightened that up. And by the time you put the shadows in here, that should be just about right. Okay, the outside edges, not a problem. It's just within the flower that you need to soften that down just a wee bit. Okay, so that's, we're good to go on that. Now let's take a look at some of the colors that we can use today for this subject. So on the bottom here, I have the colors listed for you. We'll go over to the palette, bring these over a little bit so you can see where they're going. Let me open that up a bit. Okay, pull that down so you can see where we're mixing here. All right, everybody has a sponge, I hope. Sponges are really, really important. Um, one thing we were talking about in class this morning, and I'll repeat it again this afternoon, is that particularly when you're starting to work in watercolor, you end up quite often using too much water and your color dries much lighter anyway and then you have to repaint it and then it doesn't look quite as fresh and so there's a little system that you need to be thinking about and the system is that when you put your brush in the water over here and you want to pick up paint in the palette you put your brush first on the sponge to take out some of that water and then you lift some of the paint in the palette in here and put it in there. Then you can adjust the water if you want to, okay, and add more water to it. If you decide to add a whole lot more water to it, or if you go from the brush, from the water to here, you're adding more water each time. You're diluting the paint so it will dry lighter. So generally, what I normally do if I want to add more paint to this is to go back to my water, go back to the sponge, and then pick up more paint. So I'm constantly using the sponge to control the amount of water. Okay, That's a very important thing to remember because it's really hard to keep painting if you end up with too much water on your brush. And just about everybody that starts in watercolor ends up with paint that is too thin and too watery because we always think it looks so much darker than it is. And that, again, is the reason I use the tape here. Okay. This is raw sienna that I've been mixing here while we were talking. Raw sienna is a nice transparent gold color, and that's a good one to use for the background or part of the background for this subject. So that's raw sienna. The next one that I have here on our list for today is burnt sienna. And burnt sienna here, I'm going to add just a little bit of water to that and then go back and put in a touch more paint. Okay, burnt sienna, those two are earth tones. Those are pretty much in... Um, indispensable in painting, especially landscapes particularly, raw sienna and burnt sienna. For those two colors, I always use Winsor Newton paints. And the reason for that is because Winsor Newton brand particularly makes these paints very transparent. Other brands, not so much. And so I can guarantee I can get grays and, and really wonderful neutral colors if I use very transparent versions of these. Okay, so if you're having issues with the colors that I'm using, that you're not seeing the same thing, for those two colors particularly, they vary tremendously between different manufacturers, and they can be very much thicker and heavier in other manufacturers. Okay, permanent rose, a nice pink. Need a little bit of that today, not too much, but just a little. So we might end up using purple for our shadows, and we'll decide that along the way. Permanent rose, nice pink, very strong, very, very invasive, so be, be very careful about how much of that you use, okay? Prussian blue. Prussian blue is um, a nice transparent blue. Again, it's a cooler blue, leans more towards turquoise. Okay, good, useful color. 
and we'll be using that to make the greens today. And then for just for the little centers, we need a small amount of um, cad cadmium yellow, and that one goes right there. So they're kind of tucked into the end there because we don't need very much of them, and a little amount of cadmium red. And when we mix those two together, we're going to get a nice orange for the center. Okay, so cadmium red is right here. Okay, so those are pretty much all of the colors we need. We could have a different background, but a warm background seems to work nicely for this subject. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do, and how do you know where to start and where, what to do in a painting? Well, it depends on the subject um, as to where you start in a painting. Oftentimes, when I'm doing a still life like this, I'll paint the subject first and then relate the background to the subject. However, when the background is going to be darker and the subject is lighter, then I do it the other way around because it makes more sense. And then we can relate the shadows in here to the subject and the background will show us how light or how dark they need to be. The big difficulty when you first start in watercolor is knowing how dark or how light the paint is in relation to the paper because our eye is comparing all of this white paper with the colors. So the tape helps you to understand a little bit. This is a light middle tone. Okay, so if I want my background to be a middle tone or a dark middle tone, I have to go darker than the tape. Right, I'm going to paint it just a little bit lighter, just a little bit closer to this tone, which is just a wee bit lighter. So the first thing that we're going to do is to put our background in here. And we're going to do it loosely, and we're going to do it in what I can tr call controlled wet in wet. We're going to use a little raw sienna to start with, like this, and we're going to spread it across, make a horizontal background, a little burnt sienna in a few places, and we're going to lay together colors next to each other so that they blend together a little bit, but they're not completely lost. You can visually, visually see each of the different colors, so we'll just keep them separate and over the flower there. And as you get to the flower, you're going to just surround it very quickly with a little bit of that color. These are pretty simple shapes to paint around, so we don't have to worry too much about that. If it were a more complicated shape, then we could use Frisket, and we could use the liquid latex. But that always gives us a really hard edge, and that's really not what we want in this painting. We want something that's just a little bit softer than that hard edge. And Frisket is just, it's a wonderful thing, but I have a love-hate relationship with it. I love the way it saves the white. I hate the way it leaves hard edges. And so I only use it when I have to. So pretty easy just to turn this around, okay? And watch, please, until I've finished, and then you can start. Uh, turn it around and just pull up. And even if you don't manage to get this paint right up into the edges, it's okay because you can add it later. But what I'm doing is I'm making that idea of that kind of wooden background that I had in here with these colors to start with. A little burnt sienna, a little raw sienna. Later on, we'll add on a little bit more. Now, the reason for covering this large area of the painting first is because we need to get rid of the white. We need to know what we are seeing in relationship to the white. And so we need to know which areas of the painting are going to be white. And it's a very good idea to get used to painting around the whites in watercolor, because that's much more effective overall than trying to control them with the liquid latex. Okay, And quite often we have to paint around subjects. So this is pretty easy. So once you have the idea now, um, you can start your painting, and I'm just going to take this all the way down to the bottom, but not through the glass yet. I'll show you how to do that afterwards, okay? Taking it down to the horizon, to the back wall. Just a little bit of that burnt sienna in there in a few places, maybe a little bit up there too, and raw sienna. And you might like to keep it this light, or you might like to accent it and make it a little bit darker later. But right now, this will be fine. So your turn to do exactly the same with raw sienna and burnt sienna. Now, in this instance, you can paint over the leaf. 
at the back here because that will be darker later and we want that to be in the shadow anyway. So we're just painting around the flower and now we're there. And now we have an idea of how light or how dark the areas in our painting will be because we've removed a lot of that white paper. And I will be putting just a tiny bit of a darker tone on some of this background later on. Just a little accent or two. And we'll wipe off the side here. Make sure that paint doesn't flow back in. So what you're doing is you're doing wet next to wet, which in my uh, vocabulary is controlled wet in wet. When you control the wet in wet like this, you have more chance of having it go where you want it to go. It has nicer edges and it looks more interesting because you're adding the paint next to another color and it's bleeding just a little bit where it wants to. Okay, and that goes in there, so we're good. can see how you get effects that are very watercolor like without having to do too much to make it happen when you use wet in wet or wet next to wet. Okay I'll give you a few minutes to finish that off and it doesn't have to be completely finished if you don't get it quite tight enough it's not a problem. You can always add in a little bit more background later. And now I'm going to mix the two together on my palette here. Not too dark, but just a little bit darker than the background here. And I'm just going to paint a little bit of that through the glass. Okay, leave a few little lights there. Soften that edges a little bit. And that to go just a wee bit darker than that. There we go. So the color through the glass is going to be just a touch darker. And we can make it darker later too. Okay. So before we think about the glass, we're going to work a little bit on the shadows in the petals and see how we can make those look more interesting. What color are those shadows going to be? Well, they could be a greenish tone. They could be a grayish tone. They could be a purplish tone. It could be any of those colors pretty much the same sort of colors as you would use for glass. But what we have to remember is this is a white flower, so they have to be very, very pale. You have to not overpower the um, flower with too many dark shadows. So I see more of a purpley tone in here, and that's a complement to the sort of yellow tone that we've used there, so that might be nice. And I also used a purple for the shadow at the bottom here, so that might be a nice addition. So. Let's see if we can work with that. You have the choice. If you're not a purple fan, then you can use gray. Okay. Now there are different grays and we're not using um, ultramarine blue today, but if you wanted to, um, you could make that into a gray. Perhaps we should add that in just in case anybody wants to use a gray instead of purple. I know some people are not fond of purple. So let me add in ultramarine blue as another blue for the mix today. And that's this one down here. And that way you have the option of doing grays if you want to. Also have the option of a different purple. So that's a possibility as well. Okay, so gray we know because we've painted a little bit. 
we can mix with ultramarine blue. So here, these are some possibilities for the shadows and also for the glass colors. So this is ultramarine blue, and I'm going to add in just a little bit of burnt sienna to gray it down, just to weave it. That may be too much. That's too dead. That's halfway between warm and cool. So when gray is looking like that, it's not as interesting as when it leans towards maybe cool, like this. That has more color life, or maybe warm, like this. Okay, so we have a variety of grays. The right in the middle of the gray is not as interesting as gray with just a little feeling of color. So that's one opportunity. And this is these are the same colors that we can use for glass too. So we can use grays like this to make glass. We can use greens to make glass. And we can also use greens for shadows in the flowers, but it might just be a little bit too green. Let's see what we can do with Prussian blue and a little burnt sienna to make a neutral greenish tone. Okay, and this is a good glass color. This is the color we're actually going to be using for the glass. Can you see what I'm doing there? So this is a glass color. It's a greenish tone. Works really well for glass. It could be a little bit greenish if you're greener if you want to, okay, with blue in it. Or it could be a little darker with a little bit more burnt sienna in it. So we have variations of that color. So grays and greens and purples. Purples are made with pink and blue. Now we can make purple with Prussian blue and it'll be a different purple from the purple that we make with ultramarine blue. It'll be just a little bit more grayed down because the Prussian blue has leans towards green. So it'll just be a little more gray. Okay, there's that purple, all right? It's like more of a grayed purple. Works pretty nicely for glass, works pretty nicely for shadows too. So that's one possibility. Ultramarine blue is the other possibility, too much blue there, for the shadows. And this will be a little brighter, okay? So that's another possibility for shadows, okay? So we've got a brighter blue, uh, purple, and a more dull purple. If this purple gets a little too bright, the ultramarine one, then we can calm it down just a little bit. So if we end up with a dark version of that purple and it feels just too bright for what we want, and usually we don't want it to be quite that bright when we're painting glass, we can calm it down with a little bit of raw sienna. It's the color towards the opposite of the color wheel. It's not a yellow, it's a gold. So it will calm the color down without losing the color and gray it down just a little bit, okay? So we have a whole range of colors there. And this is what I love about this double primary palette that we can make any colors we need. We don't have to go and buy 25 tubes of paint. We've got eight colors and we can just run with them. And we can do lots and lots of possibilities with this. So we have grays here with ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. Let me write that down so that you can see that on here. Ultramarine blue and burnt sienna grays. We have greens with Prussian blue and burnt sienna. Good water colors too. Colors for water. Okay, this, these particular greens. And here we have a range of purples with either ultramarine blue or Prussian blue plus a little raw sienna to gray things down a bit. So all of those colors can be used for glass. A lot of those colors can be used for water and all of them can also be used for shadows. So. If you understand how those mix, you can paint a tremendous number of different subjects. So you get to choose. Do you want gray shadows on your flowers or do you want purple shadows on your flowers? 
Greens, probably not so much. Going to make it just a bit too cool, I think, if you use the greens. We'll use the greens in the background and in the stems today, just to add in that little bit of green. So I'm going to go with the purple tones. So I have to find a purple tone that's really light and not too heavy. And the first one I made with the Prussian blue seemed to work pretty nicely. Let's see how that works again. So let's just clean off the palette here. And always a good idea to keep mixing colors because the more you mix colors, the more you become familiar with what the color does. So here's Prussian blue. Prussian blue is particularly transparent, which is good for flowers. And some of your colors in the palette here are not particularly transparent. Cadmium, the two cadmiums, the red and the yellow, are not transparent. If you want to use more transparent versions of those, you could use New Gamboge for the yellow. And you could use either Vermilion or Scarlet Lake for the red. And those are just a little bit more transparent. So if you're going to paint a lot of flowers, you might want to go for a slightly more transparent palette of those colors particularly. Okay, and now Permanent Rose is also a nice transparent color. So that gives us another a nice option here. So when we mix those together, we get a little purple tone, maybe just a touch more pink. And let's see if we can make that something that we think would work nicely as a shadow, a flower shadow color. Now it's got to have a lot of water in it because those shadows are not too strong. That would be the very darkest tone. Look how much water there is in there to make that darkest tone of the shadows. Okay, it's a lot of water. When you pull your brush through, it almost is very light, but it's not showing up very light on here. So we need to have just a little more water in the mix. We don't want to overpower these flowers right away. We want to make sure that now we're getting there. Can you see how delicate that is in relation to these? Okay. And when we compare it with the tape on the paper, it's lighter than the tape on the paper. Okay. So it's like a grayed violet. So it's Prussian blue and permanent rose. That's what we're going to use for the lighter tones of the shadows here. For these cast shadows, these ones that are darker, we can just use the same mixture but darken it a little bit. So initially we want to look and see where the shadows are. And usually the shadows are deep down inside, okay, right in there. And that's what we're going to look for. See a little bit of yellow reflected in there too, so we can add that in if we want to. So. Let's take a look at the photograph and let's lose, use some of that information now for the shadows. We'll start up here where it's not quite so important and we'll add a little shadow on the edge of this flower and soften it down just a bit, add a little shadow on the edge of that one. Now we want to be careful not to lose the white. Okay, very important not to lose the white. And most of the shadows are down towards the center of this flower. So down here you'll find a little shadow and on this one here you'll see a little bit of a shadow coming down into the tip. This little petal coming towards you here. In this little petal here the shadows go down towards the center. Okay and there's another little shadow in there. So I'm just adding in a few little shadows to start to make the form of this part of the flower. Mostly down in the center or in the base of the petals and you can soften off the edges of those shadows as they come out towards the end. And make sure this color is really really pale. Let me go in just a touch closer the um, Webcam doesn't work quite so well for lighter colors, but I think you can see what's happening there just about. And as soon as you're ready, and this is Prussian blue and permanent rose with a lot of water. As soon as you're ready, you can start to paint these background petals. And in this particular flower, they're dark on the back here. And there's just a little bit of shadow in the center. Just a touch, not too much. Just pull that out a bit. Move very delicately on flowers. I don't want to 
add too much stuff too soon. Okay, you're just getting a little feeling of shape. It looks a little grayer up on my screen, but it's actually got a fair amount of color in it. You'll start with something that isn't quite as important as far as when you're trying to figure out how to paint something or where to paint something. The idea to start with the ones that are not important just to begin with and then move to the star afterwards. I'm going to mix up just a little bit more of that paint while you're painting those two and then we will move on to the bigger flower. When we're looking at these little shadows that we see in the photograph, leaving some of the petals white and leaving the top edges of all of the petals white. Top edges of these are white, but the base is shadowed. Okay, once you've done those two, then we're going to move to these little guys here. And what we see mostly is shadow on the left hand side here. Okay, and we see a little greenish tone and we see a little yellow tone that is reflecting from the yellow there. And we don't see too much purple. So let's just put a touch of this in and we'll add in some of those other tones later. Just a little touch in the middle here of shadow color. And if you do too much, or if you find that it's too dark, just use your Kleenex and blot it. And that takes it up a little bit and stops it being too heavy. You couldn't paint without Kleenex. Right now this one, I'm going to just soften the edge out a little bit. Not so much in here, but underneath here, I'm just going to soften that edge out. And this one here, I'm going to go underneath and paint in that shadow and soften this edge down just a little bit. This one here has a cast shadow. This one here has a cast shadow. It looks like it's this pretty much this whole part of the petal here. is in shadow. There we go. Little cast shadow on the back of this one. Trying to be very delicate with these little flowers. Trying to pop one petal out by putting a darker color behind it. Okay. This is called negative painting when you do this. I'm just going to soften that out just a little bit. And just a little bit more up here. These are the shadows that I see behind those center petals. There's a little one up there too. Once we get these shadows in, then we'll be able to work on this a little more. There we go. So by putting those shadows behind these petals, we're popping these petals forward. A little bit of shadow there, a little bit of shadow. We're also painting light against dark, which is really important. Okay, every time you're painting, you're painting a relative tone against another relative tone. So it's light against dark, or it's light against a middle tone, or dark against a middle tone. Two tones together next to each other will not work because from a distance they will read the same. So they won't allow you to see the different parts of the subject. Okay, just put a little bit of tone in here, soften it off. And I'm just using these very pale tones to separate the petals just a little bit. 
and we're right down where we started now and there's a little one under there just a bit of shadow to the side it's kind of a funny shape and just a touch now in the center of this one and just a little bit in the center of these guys tiny touches and to lose that delicate feeling of flower. Now you notice that what we're doing is we're using the shadow to give form, dimension. Whenever you're painting anything real, anything that you want to look dimensional, three-dimensional particularly, you need to be aware that you need to be painting the dimension first before you think about detail. Okay, it's not about detail. Painting isn't about detail. Painting is about shapes and tones. And if we make our flower look more dimensional like this first, it's going to read better. It's going to read much better than if we just go in there and put in the detail and hope that this will happen. It'll never happen by itself. You have to think about it and decide. If you're the artist. You get to choose how you depict your subject. But dimension is more important than anything else. Now we can always darken those shadows later, but good idea to start with them very light to begin with. Okay, just a little bit of shadow on the edge, a bit more shadow on the edge of that one, and I think we'll be good to go. Maybe just a touch of shadow under that one. So just make sure that you can read pretty carefully, pretty easily, all of those little shadow shapes. So we've popped these forward by putting shadows behind them. And those are the shadows that we see, the cast shadows. To be able to do this, your subject needs to have a single directional light source, which means the light is coming from one direction only. By doing that, you're going to make the object look dimensional in the source material, and that helps you to paint it dimensionally. So anytime I buy a camera or a phone, I switch off the flash. Don't ever take pictures for painting with a flash because there's too much information and what happens is the flash flattens everything. And so you then can't see the dimension when you're trying to paint it. It's a really bad idea to have to use a flash when you're taking pictures for painting. Okay, so we're going to leave that there. We're going to move around the painting now and get to a little bit more of a finish on the vase before we go back and finish the flowers. Okay, we've done a good job of just suggesting the dimension there. And now we're going to look a little bit about at glass and see how glass works. Okay. So here we have some pictures of some bottles that I painted. Really important that you know where the shadows are on glass objects and where they are usually is on the edges, okay? So for colored glass, you'll definitely see them on the edges like this, and sometimes you'll see a big shadow that goes across here. For clear glass, and this is gray, just the, the straight gray, usually you will see the shadows on the edges of whichever form you're looking at. So if you're looking at a vase like this, which is the one we used, right? You're going to see the shadows going down the edge as you look at it. So you're going to see a shadow going down here. Can you see that? And what we're painting with the glass is we're actually painting what's inside and what's behind it, as well as what's the glass itself. But generally, as you look at glass, you will see shadows coming down here. You'll see a little shadow here. You'll see shadow here, and the light goes through the glass and picks up on the other side. And so you'll see a little bit more light here and here, and it comes through into the into the cast shadow and we're going to paint that make that happen and you can see that refraction here can't you you can see that where it stops in the water and then it jumps underneath the water and comes out at a different place so that's very important too so the first layers that we put on are layers of paint that give us the idea of where those shadows are to start with Okay, now we're going to use the greenish tone today, but if you don't like that green or you prefer to stay with the gray, then you can do that. All of those colors that we mixed up right at the beginning can be used for glass. So you can use grays, and grays are ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. Write that down. 
okay, grays, greens, and purples. All of those colors work really well for glass, depending upon your subject. Okay, clear glass is what we're talking about right now. For a colored glass, you're just going to go for the color that the glass is to start with and just make it a bit darker. So you start with a subject that has a drawing that has all the information in it, all the edges that you need to color, and then you start to look for where the light's coming from, and the light's going to come here. And technically, if I were painting this again today, technically I would add in just a little shadow across here too, because that shadow is there on the neck of that, of that particular subject. And that's a little greener one that I'd use. So you can use a mixture of the greens here, or you can use the greys, or you can use the purples. Any of those will work today. So I'm going to use the green mix. And the green mix is um, Prussian blue. Back to the palette again, and we'll take a look. Prussian blue and burnt sienna. This is a grayed down green. Burnt Sienna is on the other side of the color wheel. And so it's an orange, a sort of reddish orange. And so it's opposite to the blue. And so um, you're going to get a gray down version of that. Now we'll test that and we'll see what it looks like on the side of the painting. And that's a pretty good color for the glass, but it needs to be just a bit lighter to start with. So we'll add some more water to it. And we'll test it again. Do test your colors because that's the way to control what happens on the painting. That way you know where you're going every time you paint. Okay, so let's go back to the glass now. And we're going to suggest glass. Okay, we don't paint it. This is not a botanical. This is not a, a realistic um, trompe l'oeil painting that fools the eye, that is absolutely photographic. This is a watercolor, and a watercolor usually has suggests better than it describes. Okay, so here I've suggested. I haven't painted this realistically, but it looks pretty realistic because of the way I've suggested it. Okay, I could make it photorealistic, but I don't really see why I would do that. I think it's more interesting to let the paint and watercolor has a life of its own to let that life show in the painting. Okay, so here we go. We've got some shadows in here. Now those shadows are partly the background color and partly the glass color, but mostly the glass color. So let's just start with the idea of putting a little shadow on the edge of the glass, right this, right here, and coming down. And then it gets just a little bit lighter. And before we go too much further, just going to run in a little bit of tone next to that. Okay, so just a small amount of tone. All right, so that's what I want you to start with, just that edge there. And let that edge run into a little bit of tone. Go ahead and put that on. Notice I pulled my brush down. I skipped over just a little bit in the way that I pulled the brush down. And that's called dry brush. And that's another technique. Let's just look at that again in case you haven't done that before. Dry brush involves pulling your brush down over the surface of the water sideways like this. What it does is it catches the hills of the watercolor paper and leaves the valleys behind. Watercolor paper is varied. The surface is varied. And so it's called dry brush because of the way it looks, not because the brush is dry. And so sometimes when you put paint on like this, you can then extend it down with a dry brush feel. If you've got too much paint on your brush, you can just use the sponge to blot it a little bit and you will get a texture. And so I've got just a little bit of that texture in there. And that's good. And it's useful for describing light coming through glass. Can you see how I've got it here too? It's a little bit of dry brush texture. And it stops your paint being too solid. It makes it more interesting to look at.
Okay, got that in. Now we're going to go to the other side because usually both sides of the glass show darkness. Okay, it's very hard for me to just tip the water out of that. Hard for me to show this upside because we're looking from above here. But if I show you sideways like this, you can see that you see dark along the edge of the glass here, and you see dark along the edge there. You see a highlight, always see a highlight, and the dry brush will leave some of those. You see some shadows under here, and you see shadows in the base going inside as well. So that's what we're capturing right now, is that aspect of the glass. And it's a good idea to do it slowly, so you know where you're going. Okay, on this side, now I'm going to move over and I'm going to put in a little bit of this green. And before it has chance to dry, I'm going to pull it down again with just a little dry brush. And this time I'm not adding more paint. I'm just pulling out what's there. So I didn't add more paint. This time I painted a line and then I added a little more paint. This time, not so much. This is the lighter side of the um, of the glass and so I don't want to have too much color on that side just yet and glass needs a lot of dark colors to make it look like glass okay glass does not function well unless you have some really strong darks like this so we'll get there a little bit later Get a little bit of that dry brush in if you can, with the side of your brush. That's something that needs practice too, if you haven't done much of that before. Now we're going to address what's in the bottom of the, the glass here. And we're seeing darker tones down here. We're seeing lighter tones at this side. Okay, so we'll look at a couple of those darker tones and we'll put them through here following the dimension. So I painted this way down the glass. Now it's flat, so I'm painting this way, in this direction. Okay, let's take in some of that little bit of dry brush, take it round into the bottom of the vase like that. Just a touch, leave some lights at the back. Now already we're beginning to get a little bit of dimension. And that's what we're looking for. Okay, you got that in? So let's move on to the surface of the water now. What do we see here? We see a highlight back there. We see darker tones here. We see a light edge, maybe a light edge going all the way around, or particularly a light edge at the back here. Can't have a light edge without a dark edge next to it, right? So we need to know that. So we're going to put in just a little bit of this tone in the water area. Now that means we have to paint around the flower around the edge of that petal and we're putting this in around the edge of the water the back edge of the water like that and we see just a little bit coming through here and we're suggesting some of this okay we want to paint up to that line that water line and paint horizontally the water is horizontal and so we're just going to suggest that that's where the water goes and I've got that straight enough. Let me just pull this up a little bit on this side just to make it straighter. Okay, leave it lighter on the right-hand side. Let the light go through in that area. Okay, now just by doing what we've done, we've established a sense of form on that face. So we're going to stop there with that one. And we're going to move back up to the flower now. Let that dry down a bit and we'll come back down and put in some goodies in there afterwards. But before we do that, we're going to, we're going to paint a little bit more on the flower. One step at a time and then we'll get there. Okay. Once you get used to the idea of painting glass, you can do it quite quickly and, it, and it's not an issue because you know where you're going. But first of all, it's, it's a really difficult thing to do. So just go slowly so you don't get too lost there. All right, I'm just going to clean off a couple of places here so we can mix up a couple of colors for the center of the flower. And in the center, we have a little green. 
Okay, right here. And you can see that in this one too. We have a little green in there. We have some yellow in there. And we have some sort of orangey tone in there. What feels like an orange tone. So let's start with a little cadmium yellow. That's our yellow tone. We could also have a little um, Hansa yellow in there too, a lighter yellow. Did we say we were using that? No, we didn't. We'll just use the cadmium today. Then. And a little cadmium red on the side here, just a small amount of red. And when we mix the yellow into the red, we're going to get orange. So we want mostly yellow and a little bit of orange. And a touch of green. So the green is going to be Prussian blue and cadmium yellow. Okay, there's our little green tone that we need. Not too much, not too strong. Plenty of water in the mix. This can be just a little bit, the yellow can be just a touch stronger. And the orange just a touch stronger. Touch more paint. There we go. Okay, let's test those. There's our orange. Test the yellow. Yes, they're lighter, lighter than the tape right now, which is what we want. Just a little bit more color in that one. Okay, and the green, pretty light too. Putting these on separately. Okay, we're going to drop a little of the green into the center separately. So that needs to be maybe a touch darker, actually, just a little touch darker. Just a little stronger. Yes, that would be good. And it's a yellowish green. So we have orange, yellow, and a yellowish green. Prussian blue, cadmium yellow, and cadmium red. Okay, let's go a little closer. See what we're aiming for here. We're aiming to make this center look soft. And we don't know yet whether these shadows are dark enough until we put this in, because everything we paint relates to everything else. So all the while this is white, these look right. But as soon as we put a color in here, we're probably going to find that these need to be stronger. But let's see how that works. The light is coming from the left. So the left-hand side of this will be, and I'm painting it pretty loosely, okay? I'm not doing a line around the edge going in and out, keeping it just a little loose and free, so it feels more watercolor-like. Okay, yellow on that side, a little orange towards the back, make it slightly darker, and more dimensional. That's why we're using the orange, so that we can make it look more dimensional. Technically, it's just yellow, but if we don't use orange, it'll be flat. And we don't want it flat, we want it to look a little more dimensional. Okay, touch more orange in there. And just before it dries, not just yet, because it's too soon, it's too wet. If you can see that's still wet, yeah. You can see the shine on there? Yes, there you go. That's too wet. Just as it begins to dry, if I put the green on now, what will happen is it will spread everywhere, and that'll be too much. So just as it begins to dry, I'm going to touch in a little bit of green. And the reason I'm doing it just before it dries is so that it, the green has soft edges. And there's a little green around the back here, and there's a little touch of green in here. So, just give it a second or so, and that's probably about right now. Just a little touch of green in there. A little touch of green in here. Very small touches. Just a little touch over there. Okay, we just want to accent just a tiny little touch. We can always add a darker tone later, but we just want a suggestion. This is a very delicate little flower, and we don't want to overpower it with too much of anything. Just a little bit more green in there. Okay, that should do it. And we can come back later. And we can add in some other little suggestions in there. We can add in a little more orange, a little bit of red, and a few little other suggestions before it dries. There we go. 
Okay, that's good. That might be a bit too big. I'll take that down just a bit. Okay, that's looking good. Now we're going to do the same thing with those little ones that are in the top here. Um, you can just about see in the center of this one, you see that petal comes out there, so it's the center right about here. You can see a little orange in there too. Okay, so just put a little bit up there. And on this one, just a tiny touch in between the petals there. You can see the center of that one too. Don't worry about the greens in there. That's not necessary. All right, we'll come back to those afterwards. Now our glass has dried down just a little bit. We'll come back and do a little bit more here. Okay, let's take a look at the glass again. Mix up some more of the glass color. And has enough glue in it. Let's make sure we have enough glue in it. Let's check again. It should look like this. That was the glass color that we used. That's close. That's pretty close. So we'll go with that. That looks about right. Okay, now we're going to add in a few more darks in the glass. So we can see a little dark in here. Put that in. See a little bit of dark down here. You can put that in. Go ahead and add just a few accents of that glass color. So the accent I made was just this corner. It's getting a lot darker, as you can see. It needs to. It needs to get a lot darker. Otherwise, it's not going to work. And up here underneath the rim of the glass, I'm going to put a little shadow. And I can just about see the top edge of that. And a little shadow on the left-hand side of that rim. Just coming out a bit. The glass color here is a little darker coming through here. Now this is coming pretty much across and then straight down. So let's just do a little bit of straight down on this one. Comes out and just comes down like that. And the same thing in the back here on this one. We have to color that in just a little bit. And so we'll bring it down. This time we'll come down and go below that white line and just pull a little dry brush down below the white line. Okay. And that's all we're going to do on the outside of the glass right now. Until we get to the strong darks. Okay. We have some shadows going through there too, and we'll pick up on those when we do the other shadows. Let's go back up to the to the um, flowers now, and let's paint the le the stems and the leaves. And so we've got Prussian blue that we're using for this, and we can make it into a nice yellow green. That might be a nice one to use for this one because this background is much lighter. So a nice yellow green rather than a blue green might be a good idea. It kind of looks yellowish a little bit here. So let's see if we can make that color. Let's check that color up here, up under the light. It's a sort of yellowish green you can see in my palette there. And it's a middle tone. This is a light middle tone. So anything that's just slightly darker than this is a middle tone. And so that's what we're looking at right now. Looking at a middle tone green, Prussian blue and cadmium yellow. And we're going to start by putting in this shape that we see here. And it looks to me as though it comes in like this. OK, 
Okay, it's a little cup. Well, a bit of a cup there, but um, I'm just going to separate that out. So we see a little petal. We see a little petal here. And that comes down into the stem. Now the stems have a little dimension. So in a moment, we'll put on a darker tone than this to make that dimension. I'm just going to straighten up those petals just a little bit. Okay, bring that down, follow it down. It goes into the water. When it comes to the water level, it stops right there takes a little jog and connects up over here. Just a bit lighter, actually, when it's in the water. Just a little bit lighter. Connects up over there. You may not be able to see that that's lighter. Let me lift it so you can see it's a little bit lighter. There we go. Same thing on this one. We can see just a small amount of the stem here. And just a tiny little bit of that cup going around behind that petal. And not much on the other side. So that's really all we can see on that one. And that comes down and connects with this one right here. And then it takes a little jog and comes down a little bit lighter below there. Okay, and the third one always comes from the center of the plant, right? always from behind the center. So that one follows through and actually comes through the back here and connects up with this line that goes down here and stops at the water and then takes a little jog and comes down to about there. Now we've made the water in the vase appear to be water because of separating those stems as they go through. Okay, very important to notice that. All right, okay, let's go out just a little bit more. Okay, so we've got a lot of information here. Let's put in, um, let's do the leaf at the end. We won't do that now. Let's put in a little bit more dark just in the area that we painted. Um, just a slightly darker version of the green. To make a darker version, you use more blue and you can use a little burnt sienna too, just to darken it down a wee bit more. Okay, and that makes a nice warm dark green and that's going to give us the color for under here it's just a wee bit darker and the back side of the stem so that makes the stem more dimensional oh there's a little bit of ble bleeding in there because i wet that up let me just lift that up so the back side of the stem, even in the water, will look more dimensional, like that. So you can do that to all of them. Just give a little bit of dimension. Okay. And this in here will be just a touch darker. All right. If you'd like to keep your background the same color as this, you can paint the leaf on top. Or if you want to make the background just a little bit more different, a little darker later, then you can wait and we'll finish that off afterwards. I am going to erase out some of the uh, pencil lines up here so that um, and, and go around these flowers just a little bit so that we pop them out a bit more. OK, now let's finish off the vase down below. Same colors for the vase. Burnt Sienna and Prussian Blue.
And you can see that we're painting around the painting. We start in one area when that dry, while that dries, we start with a different area. And so that way things can dry and we don't get into too much trouble. Now this is all looking very nice, but it's very light. It's too light in relation to the reality. The reality is always darker. And so I'm making up a darker version now of that color that we're using for the water. Uh, sorry, for the glass. So it's darker than the tape. Can you see that? These are the colors I used before up here. This one is darker. As we go through the painting, we add more darks, and those darks are always smaller. We don't cover up everything we've done with darks. It's not a good idea. Okay, so we want to accent a little bit of the area at the base here, particularly with that dark tone. Okay, it looks pretty dark, and it is, and it should be, and that's fine. Just let it go across the bottom here and let it lighten up just by using your sponge to take out some paint from the brush. Let it lighten up as it goes across the center. And then we're going to add a little bit more dark on the sides and just soften that edge down a bit. Particularly on this side and soften the edge down just a little bit. Can add a bit more dark at the top there as it goes into that shape and just soften the edge down a little bit. I take it out just about here, just a little bit with a, a blot because that's where we want the light to flow through. Easier to paint it in and lift it out than to paint around. And then we'll just do a little bit more around the bottom edge there so we can see the edge of that container. Okay, and then we're pretty close to, to being done with that. I'm just going to pull down a little bit more dark in that area, just in the neck of the bottle. Okay, now we're going to stop on that bottle. We're going to go back to the flowers. And I think we can see that we possibly need to make the shadows, particularly here, just a little bit darker. So what did we use for the shadows? We used Prussian and permanent rose. So let's make that up again. And that made a nice little purple tone. Let's check that. And that's probably just a bit too dark. So I need to add more water to it. We don't want to overpower these little guys. That feels better. That feels like a better shadow to use. And that's the little shadow that I'm going to use right in here. In this area, through here. And then I'm going to soften it down looks awfully blue right now, so I'm going to take it off and say I think I'm going to add just a tiny touch of pink to it to soften it down and make sure that it feels more like the first shadows. Okay, it was a little too blue. So let's try that again. That feels better. That feels as though it fits better. And I'm going to soften that up just a little ways into the flower. If it's too dark, and it will look too dark anyway, um, just because, but if you think it's too dark overall, then you can blot it just a little bit. This is about right. It's going to dry a bit lighter, but I'll blot it just a touch. Yay, now we've got it. Okay, a little bit more here, a little bit more in those cast shadows, right? just to pop them out a bit more. And there's a little cast shadow back here too that the, um, the center is casting. And there's a nice little cast shadow behind that one. Just a little bit too dark on that. Use your Kleenex. Can't paint without Kleenex. Okay. 
and just a few little shadows up inside these petals. So maybe in the center, maybe on the left, maybe here, right? Maybe a few lines coming up, a few little divisions, just little details, just a few little details. Maybe to separate out a few petals. This one has a little shadow on the back there, so it bends over. This one has a little shadow, so it does the same thing. This one has a bit more shadow. Light against dark. Okay, try not to paint two tones that are exactly the same next to each other. Light against dark all the way through. Soften the edges out. If it looks too dark, blot it till you get it right. A few little lines coming up. The daisy lines on the petals will make them look more realistic, more interesting. Just suggestions. Okay. That should do it. And then just a few on the back here. So up here, these can get just a little darker because they're up in the shadow. Again, light against dark. Okay, so you're separating them out with light against dark. And put two darks next to each other. And here, just a little bit. That one can have a little shadow there. That one can have a little shadow there. A little bit of a shadow in there. A few little shadow edges in there make for a nice shape. And the third one the same way. Just accent those darks. Let's make sure we can see this petal in the front here of the big flower by putting a dark behind it. There we go. That's good. That's working pretty nicely. Okay, we're getting that. Now, we're going to, while that's drying down, we're going to run a little um, shadow, cast shadow across here. Um, I don't know where I got that line from, but um, let's just get rid of that. So this shadow is going backwards in this direction. Now the shadow is going to come through behind the vase as well, because <clears throat> that's what happens. When it comes through into the vase here, it stops there and it comes down here. It's refracted, okay? It's the same shadow. It has the same issue of being um, upset by the water or changed by the water. So we'll just observe that. We don't necessarily have to paint it that way. We can paint it just a little bit lighter as it goes through here and just a little darker as it goes through the bottom. There. All right, so again, we can use that same purple color for the shadow. We'll make it just a little cooler and a little darker. Cooler means a bit more blue in the mix. All right, now let's see what we've got down here. Is that too dark? Well, it's a good color, but it is just a little too dark for that shadow. So let's add some more water to it. You only get one shot with shadows. That feels better as a shadow color. Can you see how that's more transparent? It feels more transparent, okay? Shadows should feel, cast shadows should feel transparent. And they should also be very fluid. The mixture that you've got should be extremely fluid. Okay, so see how fluid this is. See how much water there is in it? It needs to be very watery for cast shadows. And that way you have a chance to get it the way you want it to go. So it's a grade violet because we've made, made it with Prussian blue and permanent rose. It's the same gray we're using here, the same color, just darker. All right, so we're going to start and we can leave a little gap at the bottom here um, and bring this around just to leave a little white gap at the bottom of the um, of the vase there. Bring the shadow around, take it right up and again we're going to leave this little white gap so we'll take it right up to the edge of that. Okay, and round the back here, a little bit in the, in the back part of the vase here, just a touch, 
We have that run through just a little bit. And now we're going to take this out to off the page and soften this center area. Soften it down so that it becomes a highlight in there. Okay, and let's just pull that out of the page and just soften this little edge down here too, just a little bit. So it's just a tiny shadow down there. Continue that into the big shadow. Now you kind of have to work fast with this. That should do it now. It could go out just a little bit more in that direction. It's got a little more color than appears, than it appears to have on the screen. It appears to be more gray on the screen. Okay, let that sit down. We're going to add a little dark under there afterwards. While that's drying down, we'll be working on some other parts. So just make sure that you soften the edge in here as this goes out. You lift it out a little bit more if you like, but it needs to have a soft edge. Soft edge is just a damp brush. There we go. And as you paint more and more in watercolour, you can paint a little faster. Okay, I don't normally stop between a lot of these things that I'm showing you. I just continue to paint, and because of that I get a few edges that bleed together. And that's okay, because sometimes that works nicely and it gives you an idea of how watercolour can be a little bit looser. So when you paint faster, you get looser. And so, but you have to know where you're going, and it's hard to know where you're going when you first start. So practice takes care of that over time. All right, now what we're going to do is to, um, we finished off the edge of this. This feels watery. We'll add a little dark under there afterwards. Before we decide on the background, we're just going to put a little bit of a foreground color in here. And we're going to use a little of the purple in the background here, just a touch to calm it down. We can leave a few whites showing. What we're just going to do is a little touch. If your um, shadow is still just a little wet, don't worry about that. Just, um, just go up to it, but not over it. Just a tiny touch. And as we move to the foreground, we're going to use just a touch of raw sienna. Just to give a little warm tone down here. In and out of that gray. We can pop in just a little warm to it's a little atmosphere. Good idea to have a slightly darker tone in the corners of your painting when you do something like this, or maybe just a little bit darker back there, and vary it. Vary it so it has a little interest. And a little bit darker there, that will also pop the flower out a bit more. And just a little dry brush here, and just a few touches of raw sienna in the foreground. We'll make that an interesting surface. Let's make sure we paint it right up to the um, vase. You can even put that warm tone through the vase if you want to. A little touch of darker tone in the corners. And now that tells us that we might want to do a little something up here. <clears throat> Maybe make it slightly darker in a few places so we can pop those flowers out or not, or leave it the way it is. But certainly we would want to dark the base, darken the base here. If we leave this the way it is, we definitely want to darken the bottom part. And again, that can be the two colors that we used back there. I'll just give you a minute to catch up. And while you're doing that, I'm just going to soften the back edge of this shadow just a bit. That soft that shadow there, it's just a little too sharp. I'll just soften that down. That's better. I'll give you a minute or two to catch up with that. Uh -huh. 
So I'm going to darken my background down just a little bit using burnt sienna and raw sienna in the same way that I did the first level, the first part of it. And I'm going to also add a little of the purple down here as I get to that point. So what I want to do is I want to pop the flowers out just a wee bit more. So any place where I see a flower here, flower edge, I'm going to go just a little darker in the background and go back and just push it back into the background. And up here, I'm going to go darker. So it's a selective darkening. And I'm going to just take that back horizontally into the background. Okay. See what happens when you do that? This leaf is going to pop out the rest of the flower. So this is dark. I don't need to add anything here because that's already dark. But I do need to add up here a little negative painting behind the flower to pop it out just a little bit. This is just the burnt sienna that I'm using right now. And if it feels a little thin in some places, you can just add in a bit more of the raw sienna along the way. But leave it nice and loose and free. Don't, don't try to paint it flat. That texture adds a lot of interest. Okay, so coming onto this side, I'm going to pop that flower out just by selectively darkening this little bit of background here. And just pull it out into nowhere. Now you could have done this in the first layer, but you don't quite know how dark things are going to end up in that first layer. So it's not always easy to know that. Oftentimes it's easier to turn the painting upside down to do this. Let's do that. A little bit here. Just take it straight out. And some raw sienna to extend that across. Try to bring some of those things that you've done on one side across to the other. So that same dark would go just about here, if I bring it across. And it's just a little bit, it doesn't have to be major, a major amount. A little bit there, maybe a little bit in here. You don't have to outline everything. Just selectively choose. Maybe just at the top here would be good. And maybe it's enough in some places just to put some raw sienna there instead of burnt sienna. Just make it a little more solid. I think I have an extra, an extra petal in there, so I'm just going to get rid of that. It's a little odd to have that big petal up there. Just in a couple of places in here, I'm going to darken behind the flower. And just in a couple of places up here too. And then the rest of it will be raw sienna. And I'll just make the raw sienna a wee bit darker. And if you feel that that's too stripy, you can just flatten it down with your brush and decide that maybe you don't want quite so many sharp edges in the background. You want it to be a little softer. So we just get rid of some of the edges by softening them down. Okay, so this is just a little less active. Okay, and that's really what it is. It's a little less active than this. This has a little more activity because it has sharper edges. Sharper edges call for attention. So you don't want the attention to be 
too much in the background. So you want to minimize a few of those sharper edges, just so that it's not too, too strong. There we go. And just maybe a couple more up here. We'll just lose down so they're not quite so sharp. And then the background goes and sits back where it belongs. I think that's probably going to be okay. And then before I finish that, I'm just going to add in a little purple down here and a touch more of the pink in it to make sure it's a warmer purple. Let me just block that again. That's just a little too cool. A little more of the pinkish purple just along the bottom here to make a shadow and in this side too. And I'm just going to let it blend in with the colors that are there, just at the base of the background. Just let it blend in so it disappears. This just needs to be a bit warmer on the side. And then we can then we can paint in our leaf and we'll be almost good to go on this one. Now you can add fabric, you can add folds, you can add all of those things, but none of that's really necessary. And it's, it was really about learning how to paint glass today more than anything. But these backgrounds are important too because they support the subject. So you can vary those. And what I normally do quite often in a background like this too is just to add a little bit of dark in the top corner of each side in different amounts. And I'll just add a little burnt sienna on top of that, just to pull it across. It just gives another little interest and finishes off the painting in that area. If you'd rather have a flat background, you can just make that happen by doing a complete wet in wet. Times it's nice to have a little texture back there. Okay, there's one more thing we need to do before we paint the leaf is to just finish off underneath the vase with a darker tone. And this is the same color that we used. And I'm just adding in a touch more pink to it. So it's the same color here that we used originally. And I'm adding in just a little bit more of the pink tone to warm it up a bit. So it's a slightly warmer purple tone. Okay, and it's pretty dark. And every time you do a still life, you need to add a dark line underneath the subject to hold it down onto the table. And so that goes under here, just a little dark line, goes right under the edge of that object. And then we just soften it down with a damp brush so it becomes a little tiny thin shadow. Okay, really important that you put that in because that just helps to connect it to the ground. Makes a big difference. Just a minor thing that makes a big difference. Okay. Now we can go back to our greens that we used and we can paint in this little leaf. And that will pop this part of the flower out. And the leaf is painted very loosely. These little leaves don't have a whole lot of information. They're just loose shapes, okay? Based on the reality, they're loose shapes. So, a little bit of this shape, a little bit of that shape, a few little edges, and just have it come around the flower. And it's there, its purpose is to pop out that petal. Okay, and just let it go out like that. And add just another little edge on there so it doesn't have that straight line. 
go. And now we can add a little of the purple in there to darken it a bit, give it a little interest on one side, and that should be fine. And if you want to lighten it just a little bit on the other side, you can lift it back a wee bit. That just is varied. Variety is what we're looking for. Draw it a little dark in there, a little dark in there. You can lift up a little bit of light in there. So we have something that isn't too solid. Okay, it has just a little light dark interest. See how that works? And if you're the centre of your flower, after you've done that, is not quite strong enough, you can go back in with a little bit more colour to make that a little stronger. Times that lightens up a bit too much. So you can do that if you want to. Take away that highlight. We don't really need a highlight in there. And maybe give it just a touch more dimension with the orange back here. Seems like it needs just a little bit more help to make it look dimensional. So I'm pushing that orange a little bit. And that feels better. Sometimes when those dry, you lose a little bit of that dimension. Okay, I think we're just about at the end of this little one today now. See if there's anything else we need to do. Perhaps we need to soften this edge just a little bit between the foreground and the background. Make sure you have a nice outline around everything. What you can do um, is to go back and lighten up, if you want to, um, the whole picture when you finish by just erasing out the pencil lines. And anything that's around the edge will erase out pretty nicely if it doesn't have too much paint on it. So that's another possibility you can think of. Might need to add some more shadows, maybe. Make sure this leaf is interesting. It looks alive. It has light and shadow. Let's add a little bit more orange to these guys up here. So they have a bit more interest to the center. Do make sure that the color of your glass is dark enough. Because if it isn't, it's not going to work very well needs to be dark enough. I'm just adding a little bit of orange and a little bit more yellow to this area, these two separate flowers. So they looked a more dimensional too. Okay, I think we're about ready to take off the tape and see how that looks now. The tape always gets in the way at the end. Okay, the painting looks much better without the tape in the end. So you've got a painting where the colours are mixed together so that they connect with each other throughout the painting. Um, you've used very light tones to keep the delicacy of these little flowers. You've painted some darks in to make the glass look dimensional. Painted a few darker areas. Feels to me like mine looks a little outlined here. Oops, got some yellow on my brush there. Um, so I think I would take a little bit more of that colour, or perhaps even the purple at this point, because that's what I was using there, and just pull that out a bit so it doesn't feel as though I have an outline around the outside edge of those flowers. Okay, so right at the end you have to make some adjustments. This is just one little adjustment that I think is, is necessary here. I need to make sure that it doesn't feel as though I've tried to outline those flowers particularly. It feels like it's background. So a little purple will help with that, a little um, burnt sienna will help with that, as you wish. So that feels a bit better. This feels a little bit outlined up here, so same thing. We'll just pull out just a little bit of that darker colour so that it doesn't feel as though it's particularly outlined. You can also lift up the colour if you've got that problem too. Lift up the colour around the edge and just blot it. That's another way to go. 
If you have any particular issues that you're facing that I haven't covered, you can just write me a little note and we can cover those before we finish, if you would like to. Anything that you're having difficulty with that is not working so well. Most of this is just practice. Just working away and doing it over and over again and really looking to see what you're looking for. Okay. You just go back in there and just outline that a little bit. So just little touches to finish off the edges and Okay, I think we're ready to go on this one. So let's just come back and say goodbye to you. And thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed painting this little subject. I hope you learned a lot because that's what these skill building um, classes are all about, is to teach you how to use these skills so that you can use them wherever you are and whenever you are and whatever subject you're, you're working with. So. Thanks again for coming and I'll say bye for now and see you again soon, I hope.